Is it possible to create 50 meals that perfectly represent each one of our nation's 50 states? Do you have a napkin? <laughs> well, I'm gonna have a lot of fun trying. I think I know why they invented the deep dish. I can do this, I can do this. I'm Taylor Hicks. You may know me as a singer, so why is an entertainer hosting a food show? Simple, I love food. I even own my own barbecue joint, and I love to travel. So I'm hitting the road and eating my way across America, one state at a time. On this episode of State Plate, I'm making my way across a Midwestern state known for pizza, popcorn, and pretty much any meal you can hold in your hands. There you go, totally loaded. That's right, I'm in the great state of Illinois. Home to farm fresh foods like corn and city inspired cuisine like the Italian beef sandwich, deep dish pizza, and the Chicago style hot dog. Who wants a Chicago dog? So stay tuned for a heaping helping of Illinois on State Plate. As always, we begin our show with an empty plate with a silhouette of the state. Our mission, to fill it up with the foods that best represent Illinois. But this time, that may turn out to be a real challenge. In most states we visit, we have no trouble finding a well-known entree and a handful of side dishes. But not so in Illinois. Seems they are most fond of entire meals you can hold in your hands. So we're ditching the side dishes and filling our plate with not one, not two, but three entrees. It may make for one heart attack of a meal, but it will be iconically Illinois. In Southern Illinois, we'll load up on corn, but not just any corn. In the Central region, we'll grab a trio of meals you can hold in your hands. Further North, we'll get the scoop on a classic Illinois dessert. Beneath my feet are the seeds of one of the prairie state's most prolific crops. With more than 25 million acres of farmland covering more than 75% of the state, Illinois produces 2.3 billion bushels per year of corn. And not all of it grows up to be corn on the cob. My first stop, Van Bergen's Country Market a hundred-year-old family farm in the western city of Hebron where Mike Van Bergen plants the seeds of Illinois' official state snack, popcorn. Inside, they pop, package, ship, and sell truckloads of this iconic local food. Hi, everybody. Hi, Taylor. Wow, I can smell that coming up the driveway. Well, it's popcorn, so that's what it's supposed to do. It smells good. Looks wonderful. So there's 333 popcorn farms in Illinois. That's a pretty astounding number. How much do you grow? We have about an acre and a quarter. It doesn't sound like a lot, but when you pop it, that would more than fill this room with popcorn. So that's a lot of popcorn. What's the difference between popcorn and regular corn? The kernels of the popcorn are a little bit smaller. Their moisture level is lower than any other type of corn. And that's what makes it explode. Pop. Yes. This lively snack may have a place in modern pop culture, but it's actually an ancient treat. Popcorn was first domesticated by pre-Columbian tribes in 5000 BC. 7,000 years later, the popcorn machine was invented right here in Illinois. This simple treat was voted the official snack in 2003. All right, Taylor, this is what we got here. After we harvested it, we picked this by hand and then shook the husk off of it. And it started off by just shelling it off like this into a tub. And you can see it is a little bit messy here. Let me see if I can try this. So it all there comes There you out. go. We plant about 24,000 per acre. After we get done shelling it off, we take it over here to the uh, fanning mill the reason why we run it in the fanning mill is because we have to clean it. So you can pour that in there. It's got some chaff in it, and there's some cob and debris in here. So what this machine does, we'll sort out the bigger chunks of cob. It blows out the lighter stuff, and the heavier stuff is the hulls. And that will fall down and get distributed into the buckets. Smart machine. And there you have it. There's your hard work. Ready to go in the store. I knew that you had to shuck it, but I didn't realize that you had to agitate it like you do. The agitation helps loosen up some of the debris that's on the kernel yet. 
I'm sort of getting agitated because I'm getting hungry for some popcorn, so let's go pop all this okay. stuff. Okay. Popcorn is eaten all over the country, 13 billion quarts a year. But in these parts, real popcorn is all about the toppings. There's butter, but that's for the tourists. Want to eat like a local? You got to go with the caramel and cheese. And I don't mean both, I mean mixed together, Illinois style. So you got cheese, and you got caramel, and you shake it up like this, and then you dig in. It's very cheesy. It was a great beginning, though. And then it's almost like you have dessert at the end with the caramel, so it's like a whole meal and a snack. You go from appetizer to dessert all in one bite. That's you got it. I love it. <laughs> yep. But I'm gonna go with appetizer. On our appetizer plate, an Illinois-sized portion of Illinois-style popcorn. A perfect start to our Illinois state plate. Coming up. You gotta grab it, lean back a little bit, get that booty back. And just like that. <laughs> the juicy secret that fuels the iconic Italian beef sandwich. All right. <laughs> I'm on the hunt for our next state plate contender. To fill our plate up, I'm headed downtown. Chicago, Illinois, home to picturesque Lake Michigan and food as famous as the Windy City skyline. With its razor thin slices of beef, dripping juice, and toppings that make it spicy or sweet, the Italian beef sandwich is iconically Illinois. And what holds the entire thing together? Bread. Hey, Taylor, welcome to Domato's. How are you? I, I hear that this is the place for Italian style bread. Is that true? Our best thing we're known for is our bread for our Italian beef sandwiches. It's not tough to find an Italian beef sandwich in Chicago, they're sold on every corner. But the bread, locals know that comes from Damatos. In this family-owned kitchen, they chop, throw, knead, and roll more than a 1,000 loaves a week. And they do it all by hand. Tell me about this world-famous bread. This bread has been in our family for almost 50 years. We bake with a coal-burning oven, and we shovel coal into it every day, twice a day, actually, to keep it nice and hot. And um, it's made with love. I can see the family love. <laughs> So tell me what you're doing here. We're getting dough ready. I'm gonna roll it out. Do you try to do that? You ready for it? Yeah, yeah. You can handle it? Yeah. All right, let's go. You wanna start right in the middle. Try How out. long have you been doing this? My whole life. My dad made me start coming here when I was a little kid. So you do it like that? All right, you got that part down. Now you wanna start stretching it out. Try that. Keep it even. Go. Try to use it right here. Push. What do you think? This is pretty good? Eh, for a first timer, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> you need a little bit more practice. That's not gonna fly over here at the models. <laughs> <laughs> it's my first time. Come on, yeah. help me out. A little bit of training. You guys obviously come from Italy, but the Italian beef sandwich is only from Chicago. Yeah, it started right here in Chicago, yep. The Italian beef sandwich is actually a culinary half-truth. It's got beef, but it's not Italian. The sandwich was actually born in Depression-era America, created to help fill folks up when they were down on their luck. Legend has it, the first Italian beef sandwich made its debut in the 1930s at peanut weddings. Events for Italian immigrants so poor, they could only afford to serve peanuts. To add precious meat to the menu, they had to slice it thin, really thin. The watered down drippings added flavor and much needed calories. Veggie toppings made it a bona fide meal. So this is the coal burning oven. This is the famous coal burning oven, only one in Chicago. So the coal coal goes, comes out the chute, and it all funnels down here, and this is where the oven is. Yep. Roberto, want to show them how to do it? Let's see how you do this. Yeah. Why don't you give it a try? All right. <laughs> one more time. One more time. <laughs> There it there. is. There, all right. That's it. Yeah. You got it? The bread bakes for 25 minutes. The heat rises from downstairs where the coal is. What temperature does it bake at? Well, this kind of oven like this, it varies. So we just know. You just know, huh? Yeah. You ready to take it out? Yeah, let's take cool. it out. It's pretty, you uh, got it. You got it. Be careful, because, like, I might kill somebody in this thing. Now, you just, like, right stab under, it. Yeah. Yeah. Pull it out. Not bad. Not bad. 
the world famous yep. Italian beef sandwich station. Let's go ahead and try to get this sandwich going because I'm hungry. All right. So the beef goes on the bread. Spread the beef out a little bit, yep. Then we go, bam, circle it around a little bit, up again, right there. We're in Chicago, baby, and Jordan couldn't dunk like that. Woo! <laughs> so let's put yeah, some toppings we're on. ready. So we got hot jardinier right here. Hot what? Jardinier. Jardinier, is that the type of pepper? It's a spicy Italian blend of peppers. Jardinier. You got it, you got it. That's the real hot stuff. Real hot? And real hot. And then sweet. Yeah. And so so you can what mix kind of them. peppers are those? They're green peppers, and then we cut them up and we season them our way. So how do you like it, Taylor? Hot or sweet? We could do both, mix it up. I think mixed, hot and sweet. I think that's good, all right. There you go. So this is the finished product. Yeah, and you don't cut it in half. You gotta eat the whole thing. You gotta grab it. Lean back a little bit, get that booty back, and just like that. <laughs> so let me try this. All so right. step, get into it, there you step, go. Yeah. And then lean. Yeah, get there you wide. go. Yeah, let me see it. And All like, right, there it is. And like. <laughs> you got it. How is it? It's all over me. <laughs> but that is a phenomenal sandwich. It is spicy. I'm digging it. Good, good, good. What's amazing about this bread is that it holds all of this wonderful ingredients together, holds to the test, keeps everything inside. So that's a great sandwich. Thank you, thank you. On our entree plate, a hot and spicy Italian beef sandwich, a classic Illinois dish. Do you have a napkin? <laughs> <laughs> Coming up. Who wants a Chicago dog? Who wants a Chicago dog? A staple meal, Chicago style. My taste buds are being dragged through the garden. I'm on a mission to create a meal using the most iconic foods Illinois has to offer. Our next tasty treat also has roots deep in the Windy City, two inches deep. Say Chicago and one thing comes to mind. Pizza. I think I know why they invented the deep dish. Chicago style pizza refers to a variety of pizzas created in the Windy City, but deep dish pizza takes the cake, or should we say pot. My next stop, Gulliver's Pizza, the unofficial deep dish capital of the world, where Dino Georgius and his staff whip up more than 300 deep dish pies per day. So what are we doing here? Oh, we're prepping the dough for the pizzas. Right now we're weighing them. How much does the dough weigh usually? Two pounds for this large pizza over here. And that's pretty much two pounds on the dot. You've done this a while. Quite a few times. <laughs> so we got the dough, we got the deep dish. Let's make it. The lesson. We gotta press it out to the size a little bit. Roll the pan a little bit around like that. So you smush and spin, right? Smush and spin. You gotta create smush. a nice little wall on the side. Two inch wall, because we need that two inch pizza. I think I'm gonna be good at this. Uh, you you need know, a little come on. Practice there, come I on, think. come on. Don't forget, you're eating this, so. <laughs> then we gotta do the cheese. I've been known to be cheesy every now and then. All the way around, nice and even. Another unique trait of the deep dish pizza, the cheese is on the bottom. Absolutely, because we're crazy here in Chicago. We want to do things a little upside down, a little backwards. Chicago-style deep dish pizza, cheese comes first, then ingredients, anything goes, then sauce on top. Roll the pan, roll the pan, roll the pan. Roll in the pan Not here. bad, pretty good. Then we do the oregano. Oregano. Parmesan cheese. All right, let's fire this up. There we go. So what transformed pizza from an Italian delicacy to a meaty, iconic Illinois meal? It came to America. In Italy, pizza was precious, delicate bread with fancy toppings. But once it crossed the Atlantic, it got big and it got messy. In 1943, Pizzeria Uno chef Ike Suell took it up a notch by creating a different kind of crust. And the aptly named deep dish pizza was born. Uh, cheers. Mm. What do you think? On top, you can see the sauce, but you don't realize what's in the middle. Oh, it's the layers, the cheese, the sausage combines to give that succulent flavor. Unbelievable. When they say pie, they mean it. Absolutely, this is a pie. This is a true pie. We found our next entree. Deep dish pizza may qualify as a meal in itself, but it's taking its place alongside the Italian beef sandwich on the Illinois State Plate. I'm loving it. Take a walk through the biggest city in Illinois and you'll see hundreds of these. 
there are more hot dog stands in Chicago than all other fast food joints combined. And that's no accident. The hot dog rose to fame in Illinois in the early 1930s, another depression era food created to fuel empty stomachs on the cheap. Low in cost, high in protein. The hot dog fit the bill, or should we say bun? What started as a necessity turned into a local tradition. One Chicago dog. Fueling busy lives with an easy meal folks can eat on the go. What can I get for you? Two Chicago dogs. Two Chicago dogs. Kim Castile has been fueling that demand for more than 20 years. Hope you enjoy those. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi there. Hey, Taylor. Great cart. Thank you very much. Great <laughs> location. I know, what a view, right? So what makes a hot dog Chicago style? It's all about the toppings. List off all the ingredients of a Chicago style hot dog as fast as you can, don't cheat. <laughs> OK. Mustard, onion, relish, tomato, hot pepper, celery salt, and a dill pickle spear. No ketchup. No ketchup. No ketchup ever. Why no ketchup? It's a Chicago thing. If you want ketchup, you're going to have to go to New York. <laughs> if you want ketchup here, we make you dance for it because we really don't want to put it on your hot dog. <laughs> so show me how to make one of these. All right, let's go. You need your tongs. Building the perfect hot dog starts with a freshly steamed bun and an all beef dog. So you put your hot dog right there. OK. Followed by the long list of toppings. They call this dragging it through the garden. Dragging so want, it through yes, the garden. You want to make sure every time you take a bite, you get a little bit of everything. We're dragging <laughs> this through the garden. Yes. And no ketchup. No, don't even look at the ketchup. See, I'm a natural. You are. I think you should stay today and work with us. OK. We're about to get very, very busy. Who wants a Chicago dog? Who wants a Chicago dog? Two hot dogs, please. Chicago style? You betcha. I can do this. I can do this. Holy cow. <laughs> That's a lot of Chicago style. <laughs> what do you think about that? It looks good, Absolutely don't it? Absolutely delicious. <laughs> <laughs> So how fast do you make these? Very fast, and you probably need to pick it up a little bit because we have a long line back there. You're doing great. I'm hanging in there. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know what you think. That looks great. Fantastic. It's really good. Only in Chicago. You think I deserve one? Definitely. I'm very impressed. Mmm. So my taste buds are being dragged through the garden. You can just every vegetable that's on this thing. Have you ever had this many vegetables on a hot dog? No. And <laughs> I never thought that anyone would put a pickle on it, you know? Mm-hmm. Adds a nice little crunch. <laughs> We've got our third entree, rounding off the trio, the Chicago-style hot dog, deliciously dragged through the garden. Can I have some ketchup? <laughs> Gotta dance first. <laughs> Do I dance while I put the ketchup <laughs> that, on there? That'll work. That'll work. Coming up, how a ban on soda created a world-famous dessert. So do you think I should name it on the Illinois state plate? Yeah. Easy question. What has two scoops of ice cream, rich syrup, whipped cream, and a cherry on top? An ice cream sundae, of course. A lesser known fact, this world-famous dessert was created right here in Illinois. Looks like a party. What's going on here? We're having an ice cream social. An ice cream social. Mm -hmm. Every year, the tiny town of Evanston loads up the coolers and hits the park to celebrate the ice cream sundae. I'm getting the scoop on this local treat from local historian Chris Hartzell. Well, I hear that this is the birthplace of the ice cream sundae. It is. This is Evanston, the home of the ice cream sundae. Now, how did this ice cream sundae start? Probably about 1881. It started because Methodists that founded Evanston didn't want you to have too much fun on a Sunday, so they outlawed the sale of soda water. So everybody who liked to go to the ice cream parlor and have a soda couldn't have a soda on Sundays. So the gentleman who ran the pharmacy in downtown Evanston, Garwood, just took the soda water out and put some syrup in instead and invented the ice cream sundae. I didn't realize soda was illegal. <laughs> Isn't that funny? To lose all reference to the Sabbath, Sunday was changed to Sunday. The cherry took its rightful place on top, and the ice cream sundae was born. So let's try this. That tastes really good. <laughs> but before it goes on the Illinois state plate, we're going to have to talk to some folks. Do you have any idea where the ice cream sundae was invented? Maybe California, because it's really hot there. Somewhere in America? Illinois. Chicago, uh, please? 
Evan's doing it. You got it. Really? Oh, wow. Could you believe that? No. <laughs> so, do you think I should name it on the Illinois state plate? Yeah. You think I should? Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. What do yeah. you think? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Yes? Oh, yeah. Well, I think we have a winner. By unanimous vote, the legendary and local ice cream sundae is the cherry on top of our Illinois state plate. Who wants a Chicago dog? Who wants a Chicago dog? We've created a state plate that truly represents the state of Illinois. Okay. Let's go pop all this okay. stuff. Okay. On our appetizer plate, the official Illinois state snack, cheese and caramel popcorn. It's like a home meal and a snack. On our entree plate. How is it? It's all over me. <laughs> a classic Chicago Italian beef sandwich. Do you have a napkin? <laughs> a delicious slice of deep dish pizza with equally deep Illinois roots, and... Holy cow, that's a lot of Chicago style. A Chicago style hot dog dragged through the culinary garden, making our entree plate a triple threat of iconic Illinois meals meant to be held in your hands. And for dessert, the world famous ice cream sundae created right here in Illinois. Everybody in their life needs a cherry on top of something. A state plate that pays perfect tribute to the foods and traditions of Illinois.